Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're cutting into a topic that, well, it often sparks some pretty lively discussions in the OR distal digital replantation. Yeah, definitely. For you, the plastic surgery residents and attendings listening, our mission today is to uh, slice through some of those long-held assumptions right. and arm you with the latest evidence, stuff you can actually use in your practice. Precisely. We're really zeroing in on a key systematic review today. It's a systematic review of the outcomes of replantation of distal digital amputation by Sebastian and Chung from 2011. Okay. And this isn't just, you know, another paper. It's a really comprehensive look, pulling together data from over 2,200 distal replantations. Wow, that's a lot. It is. It gives us probably the clearest picture we have on survival rates, mm. functional outcomes, the works. So the goal is connecting that evidence to our decisions. Exactly. To your surgical decision making, how you manage patients. We want to give you those crucial why and how insights. Okay, let's unpack this then. Because, you know, many of us operate with certain assumptions kind of ingrained, especially about procedures seen as technically really tough. Sure, that happens. But this paper, it seems to powerfully show that some of our beliefs, specifically about distal digital replantation, maybe aren't built on the strongest scientific evidence. That's right. And in our field, that's, well, it's critical to explore that, isn't it? Especially when we're making daily clinical calls. Absolutely. Critical. So before we dive into the uh, the hard numbers, let's maybe talk about the elephant in the room. You know, the thing that's influenced maybe our mentors or even our own first thoughts on this. You mean the view on single digit replants? Yeah, exactly. That longstanding viewpoint about replanting single digits, particularly those proximal to the FDS insertion. Right. The contraindication. The paper reminds us that kind of replant in adults is often contraindicated, right? Because of that risk of a stiff PIP joint messing up the whole hand function. Exactly. But what's fascinating here is the distinction the authors make. They suggest distal replantations are actually more like a DIP joint fusion, physiologically speaking. Hmm. Okay. How so? Well, a DIP fusion still lets the PIP joint move freely. It maintains that crucial motion. Right. Okay. I see. Yet despite this... Distal replantation isn't done as much as you might think it would be. So why not? If it preserves PIP motion. That's the big question the paper raises. Yeah. Why the hesitation? What's holding it back in so many places? It seems like perception is maddling the data here. The paper points to two main reasons for this gap, doesn't it? It does. One, it's seen as, you know, incredibly technically difficult, super hard surgery. Hmm. And two, maybe more importantly, the functional loss from just a missing fingertip. Mm-hmm it's often just dismissed, seen as negligible. Yeah, well, it's just the tip. That kind of thinking. Exactly. So this perception that it's both too hard and maybe not worth the effort, that's what we need to scrutinize today. Indeed. And historically, if you look back, articles from Morrison and Weiland in 77 were often quoted to argue against distal replants. Right. I remember seeing those cited. They suggested, you know, significant social economic problems or that the functional gain just wasn't enough to justify the complexity. But did they have data? Well, that's the key point this review makes. Those foundational papers didn't actually present data to back up those specific objections. Ah, uh, okay. And later reports like Urbaniak in 85 and others since then have actually affirmed that single-digit amputations distal to the FDS insertion should be considered for replantation. So the thinking evolved, but maybe the perception lagged behind. Precisely. That historical context helps explain why we might still bump into those older ideas today. Okay, so given that history and the real technical challenges, how do you study something like this rigorously? A randomized controlled trial seems, well, impossible, ethically speaking. You're absolutely right. It's not feasible. So a systematic review really becomes the only way to pull together the best evidence we have looking across many different experiences. Makes sense. And this study, they were strict. They had clear inclusion criteria, needed primary data. Studies had to report on five or more distal replantations, single or multiple digits. And survival rates. And crucially, yes, reported survival rates. They really scoured the English literature from 65 right up to 2010. They aimed for a really comprehensive, unbiased view. And what specific data points were they pulling out? For, you know, for us prepping for boards or managing these cases, knowing the metrics is key to using the results. Oh, they were meticulous. That's what makes this review so clinically useful. They got demographics, number, and level of amputations using tomizones, 
you know, zone IKIP to nail base, zone 2 DIPJ to nail base. Not standard classification. Right. And critically, the type of injury, clean cut, crush cut, crush avulsion, which digit? Injury mechanism is huge. Absolutely. The injury op details, venous outflow techniques, vein grafting, nerve repair, was it done or not? Got it. And outcomes. Outcomes weren't just survival. They looked at objective stuff. Sensibility, specifically two-point discrimination, range of motion, return to work stats, and importantly, complications like pulp atrophy or nail issues. Wow, that is incredibly thorough. So putting it all together, 30 studies, over 2,200 replants. What's the big picture? What's the headline finding? Okay, here's the undeniable headline for your practice. Mm. The mean overall survival rate for distal digital replantations was 86%. 86%? That's actually really high. It's remarkably high. It puts it right up there with maybe even better than the 80 to 90% survival reported for more proximal replants. So that directly challenges that old skepticism, doesn't it? That distal cases just don't do as well. Directly refutes it. That data is strong. Okay, 86% is powerful. But let me play devil's advocate for a second. Did they find any subgroups or factors that do lead to worse outcomes beyond just the injury type, like comorbidities or anything? That's a fair question. The study focused mainly on the factors reported in the included papers. While comorbidities weren't a central analysis point across all studies, the type of injury was definitely the major factor influencing survival that they highlighted. Right, the injury type. And what about the level zone I versus zone two? Did that matter for survival? Interestingly, no. The data showed no significant difference in survival between zone one and zone two replantations. Okay, that's a key pearl right there. The level itself within the distal area isn't the main predictor? Correct. But the injury type, that made a huge difference. Clean cut amputations did much better, 92% survival, wow. compared to crush cut at 80% and crush avulsion injuries, which dropped down to 75%. Okay, so for us in practice, that initial assessment of how it happened is critical for prognosis and talking to the patient. Absolutely, it helps you manage expectations right from the start. That's super valuable, especially for residents building that clinical judgment. Now let's talk about uh, the big challenge, venous outflow, those tiny distal vessels. The bane of the microsurgeon's existence sometimes. Exactly. What did the review find about tackling that, especially in these really distal zones? Well, this study provides some really compelling evidence here. Repairing a vein significantly boosted survival, and that was true in both Zone 1 and Zone 2. Both zones, even Zone 1. Yes. For Zone 1, survival was 92% with vein repair versus 83% without. Big difference. And in Zone 2, it was 88% with vein repair versus 78% without. So this really pushes back against some older ideas, maybe? That vein repair in zonal I, wasn't as critical or maybe even possible consistently. It directly contradicts some of those less robust, older findings, yeah. So the clinical takeaway is crystal clear. If you can find a vein, repair it. Even way out into my zone one, it matters. Absolutely. Despite the technical difficulty, the effort pays off in survival. Okay. And besides direct repair, what other tricks were used for venous congestion? How do they compare? Direct vein repair was done in about 63% of cases, and it definitely had the strongest evidence for improving survival. Yeah. But yeah, surgeons used other methods too. Things like um, external bleeding, mm -hmm. you know, small incision to let it ooze leeches, sometimes ligating a digital artery, AV anastomosis, even placing the digit in a dermal pocket temporarily. Right. The toolbox? Exactly. Shows the ingenuity needed. Yeah. But again, the data really points to direct vein repair as the gold standard for maximizing survival chances. It makes sense. Survival is step one. But the big question for the patient and for us is function, right? Does the replanted digit actually work? Crucial point. And the functional outcomes reported are actually very encouraging. Like right. The mean two-point discrimination was reported as seven millimeter. Seven millimeters. Right. Okay, that's good protective sensation. Exactly. Really important for actually using the hand, feeling things, avoiding injury. It yeah. tells you the digit is truly functional, not just alive. Now, here's something that sounds like a potential game changer for planning surgery, maybe a key pearl for residents. What about nerve repair? We always aim to fix everything. We do. That's the instinct. But what did the review find about nerve repair specifically in these distal replants? This was actually a really significant finding. Nerve repair was performed in less than half of the reported replantations. Less than half. Wow. Yet, despite that, the average two-point discrimination was still that excellent seven millimeter. So, nerve repair isn't essential for good sensation distally. 
the data strongly suggests it's not essential for regaining protective sensation in these very distal injuries. How does that work? Well, the authors suggest a couple of reasons. One, it's a very short distance for those purely sensory digital nerves to regenerate. And two, this phenomenon of uh, adjacent or spontaneous neurotization. Basically, nearby nerves can grow in especially in younger patients. Fascinating. So for you in the OR, this means you might be able to simplify the procedure somewhat, save time, without necessarily compromising that key functional outcome of protective sensation. That's a huge practical point. It definitely makes you rethink the absolute necessity in every single case. What about complications, though, beyond survival and sensation? Right. Important to counsel patients properly. The outcomes are generally good, but complications do happen. Pulp atrophy was noted in about 14% of patients. Okay, some thinning of the pulp. And nail deformity was more common, around 23%. Hmm, nearly a quarter. So these are definitely things to discuss thoroughly during consent. Interestingly, the study by Han and Young, which had a lot of patients, especially zone eye cases, they specifically recommended repairing as many veins as possible, partly to reduce these complications. Ah, so good outflow helps minimize those secondary issues, too. Seems like it. <laughs> Again, reinforcing how important that venous repair is, not just for survival, but maybe for the quality of the final result, too. Okay, so putting it all together, how does replantation stack up against the alternative, which, let's face it, is usually revision amputation? That's the real clinical choice point. Exactly, and this is where the evidence gets really compelling for advocating for replant when appropriate. The paper cites a 2006 study by Hattori and colleagues. What did they find? They directly compared functional outcomes. Distal fingertip replantation versus revision amputation. They found no difference in grip strength, interestingly. Okay. But the replantation group had significantly greater active flexion of the PIP joint, less pain, and better DASH scores. You know, the disabilities of the arm, shoulder, and hand questionnaire. Better function and less disability. Yes. And maybe just as telling, patients with replanted fingers were more likely to report always using the affected digit for daily activities. That speaks volumes, doesn't it? It really does. It strongly suggests replantation offers not just a cosmetic benefit, but a genuinely superior functional outcome. Directly challenges that old idea that revision amputation has minimal functional impact. Okay, so the evidence seems strong for replantation being valuable, but it requires that very specific high-level skill set. The paper mentioned something about where this expertise is concentrated. It did, and it's quite striking. Almost 70% of the distal replantations reported in the literature they reviewed came from centers in Asia. 70%? Wow. Why is that? The authors suggest a few factors. Possibly cultural values, like Confucian ideals emphasizing body integrity. But also, critically, a concentration of highly experienced microsurgeons and dedicated centers. This isn't just microsurgery. They call it super microsurgery. Sure, microsurgery. It yeah. implies an exceptionally high level of skill, specialized training, and likely volume. So for us, for the residents and attendings listening who are maybe in North America or Europe or elsewhere, what's the implication here? Well, it clearly highlights a need, doesn't it? A need to develop similar specialty centers outside of Asia. Is transfer feasible? ischemia time. That's a good point. The warm ischemia time is actually less critical for these very distal parts compared to more yeah. proximal amputations. Yeah. So transfer to a specialized center is often quite feasible. Okay. But the paper also warns about that potential vicious cycle. If you don't do the procedure often, you don't build expertise, outcomes might suffer, which discourages doing it. You see the loop. Yeah, the classic low volume problem. Exactly. So for those involved in training or setting up services, it really suggests a call to action. We need dedicated training, maybe fellowships focused on super microsurgery, to build that expertise and break the cycle. We need to make this beneficial procedure more widely available. This whole deep dive has really um, challenged some perceptions that I think many of us encountered in training were still here. Definitely. That idea that distal replant is just too hard, not much functional gain, while revision amputation is easy, cheap, minimal loss. Oh. It just doesn't seem to hold up to the evidence presented here. It really doesn't. And the authors make another critical point about the evidence base or lack thereof. What's that? They point out this glaring gap. There's basically no solid outcomes data published on revision amputation itself. Really? None. Not evaluating functional outcomes in detail or mm -hmm. psychological outcomes. And no economic analysis studies comparing the two procedures head to head. So we're often choosing the simpler option without really knowing its true functional or economic cost compared to replantation. Precisely. 
we're often making decisions without a full evidence base for the alternative we choose instead of replant. That's a significant blind spot. Okay. So this systematic review is a massive step forward for evidence-based practice in this area. Where do we go from here? What's next? Well, the authors make some good suggestions. They stress the need for more uniform ways of reporting outcomes in future studies. Mm -hmm. Things like sensibility testing, range of motion. We need standardized methods to really compare apples to apples across different centers and studies. Makes sense. Better data quality. Exactly. And they even propose a new classification system for these amputations, distal to the FDS insertion. They show it in their figure four. The idea is to clear up some confusion caused by existing systems and get everyone speaking the same language when describing these injuries. So it's about refining the surgery and refining how we measure and talk about our results. Precisely. Both are needed to keep improving. Okay. So wrapping up this deep dive, the picture seems pretty clear, actually. Distal digital replantation, yes, it's technically demanding, requires specialized skills. Super microsurgery skills. Right. But it boasts a high survival rate, surprisingly good functional outcomes, especially sensation. Yeah, that 7 millimeter 2 point is impressive. And it seems, based on the comparative data we do have, to offer real benefits over revision amputation when it's indicated and done by experienced hands. I think that's a fair summary. For you, the residents and attendings, the key clinical pearls to take away are probably, number one, the huge importance of venous repair, even in zone I. Okay. Number two, the realization that nerve repair, while ideal, if possible, isn't always essential for getting that crucial protective sensation back distally. Right. That simplifies things, potentially. And number three, critically evaluating the injury type right at the start, clean cut versus crush. That really guides prognosis. So this knowledge should help everyone counsel patients more effectively, make more evidence-based decisions, and maybe move past some of those older, unsupported assumptions. That's the goal empowering clinical practice with solid evidence. This has definitely challenged us to look beyond those ingrained perceptions and really see what the data tells us. And it also highlights, I think, our collective responsibility to build and maintain expertise in these complex but beneficial procedures like super microsurgery. Well said. Which leads us nicely into perhaps our final provocative thought for everyone listening to consider. Okay, let's hear it. In today's world, with increasing focus on cost-conscious medicine, where expensive, complex interventions really have to demonstrate superior outcomes to justify their use. Right. What specific evidence are you actually relying on when you make the decision between distal replantation and revision amputation? Especially given that the functional, psychological, and even economic outcomes of the seemingly simpler option revision amputation remain largely unstudied and scientifically unchallenged. Hmm. That's a powerful question to reflect on. What data are we really using for that comparison? Thank you for joining us on the deep dive. My pleasure. We hope this exploration into distal digital replantation has armed you with valuable insights and maybe some renewed confidence in approaching these challenging cases. Until next time, keep digging for that knowledge.